This is the new Phoebus Wavemaster GMT. And spoiler alert, this may be one of the best entry-level GMTs around. But first, story time. Now, five years ago, I reviewed the second iteration of the Wavemaster. The Wavemaster has actually been one of the longest running models in Phoebus's history. And what was so great about that watch was that it seemed to give you everything you could possibly want in an affordable entry-level diver. Basically, everything we've been asking Seiko to do that they never would. Like sapphire, ceramic, great loom, good solid links, an interesting engineer bracelet, milled clasp, reliable NH34A movements, etc, etc, and all of this at a pretty reasonable price. Now, these days, I gotta admit, we're pretty spoiled when it comes to watches like this. But back then, back in the early days of the channel, back in the early days of microbrands, and a bit before anyone ever heard of Pagani or Steel Dive, this was a bit of a rarity. And I think watches like the Wavemaster as well as the Eagle Ray were the ones that really put Phoebus on the map. Watches that showed everyone that this random brand they'd never heard of, with this pretty funky logo, was worth paying attention to. Now, fast forward to today, and Phoebus has brought back the Wavemaster. This time, it's a little bit smaller, and with 100% more GMT. This new version has a lot to live up to, but I think this is one of the few times that the sequels live up to the original. And as typical with Phoebus reviews, the promotional tag is up, as Phoebus provided the watch and I don't have to send it back. Although, I am a little bit late to the party on this one, as a lot of the colorways are already sold out but I'm sure they'll be restocked soon. Now, since this one is fairly straightforward, we might as well do it by the numbers. And first off, let's talk specs. Phoebus decided to shrink this one down to 39 half millimeters. I'm sure they've heard a lot of the enthusiasts asking for smaller watches and they responded. With that, it also comes with a shorter 46 millimeter lug to lug, a total thickness of 12.7, including the screwed down case back and flat sapphire crystal. And 12.7 is fairly standard for a diver these days, but it's pretty good for a watch with 200 meters of water resistance and that Seiko NH34 GMT movement. Weight here is sitting at a hefty 170 grams on its bracelet, give or take a link or two, which is a little bit on the heavy side, but kind of understandable when you pick up its engineer style bracelet, or over-engineered. Now, while it is a tad smaller, the design here has stayed true to the original, which is a good thing. It's one of their older designs and people seem to love it. It was a straightforward tool watch and it knew it. So the case here is in line with that. A streamlined design without any crown guards. Just a mostly brushed exterior with slim polished chamfers going down each side. The crown is signed and screwed down, but perhaps it is a tad small. Looks good with the design and I didn't have any problems with it myself, but if your fingers are on the chunky side, you might. Flipping the watch over, it's got a nice beefy screw down case back, complete with the love it or hate it Phoebus logo, the Kraken that started it all. It's great to see they kept it with the update. For the bezel, it has a nice black ceramic insert which matches the dial, as well as having ceramic is a great choice for the price. And Phoebus wisely decided to go with a 24 click bidirectional action bezel, as you should with a GMT. And the action here is practically perfect for that crisp and sharp with just the right amount of resistance. Really well done. Perhaps the best GMT bezel I've seen near this price. Most of the others are maybe a little bit sloppy as you go back and forth. The dial is where things get a little interesting and maybe a little bit homage as the Wavemaster is Phoebus's take on the Omega Seamaster. So it incorporates a similar wavy textured pattern to the dial, as well as the same sets of dots and dashes for the indices. But beyond that, it's pure Phoebus, with a different handset and raised chapter ring with 24-hour indicators on the outer edge, as well as the colorways. I don't think I've ever seen Omega do anything quite like this. Now, since I haven't seen them, I can't really comment too much on those other colorways, but this one is sharp and well-defined, with its polished framing and light blue loom just popping out against you against the black backdrop. Very easy to read, very striking, yet not over the top in any way. Although this time, there's also the addition of the vibrant orange GMT hand doing the same. As well as there's a simple cutout for the date down at the 6, and I do wish that they had color matched that date wheel. Sometimes we reviewers get way too picky about color matched everything, but here it really does stand out against the blue indices. 
And of course, you can't forget that Kraken or Octopus logo sitting boldly at the top just under the 12. Again, it's a love it or hate it kind of thing. And over the years, I have seen a lot more people come around to liking it. So overall, there's some minor changes here from the older version. And for the most part, the addition of the GMT seems seamless. And the new Wavemaster winds up having the same feel as the original, which is that of an easy to read purpose built tool watch. It's just now it's got a little bit added functionality and a more comfortable size. And I think this is one of the reasons why the design works and has been successful for Phoebus in the past. As it seems familiar, yet at the same time different and distinct from other watches out there. Which I know sounds a bit like a contradiction, but it's really the best way I can describe it. And this is something I've talked about with other microbrands as well. As the most successful microbrand watches I've seen seem to straddle that fine line. If it's something too similar, then it's a straight up homage. And if it's something too different, then people think it's too strange to buy. And watches like the Wavemaster seem to find the balance in between. And for a microbrand, I think that's a key to success. Anyway, as for the Loom, Loom is great with a healthy application of blue BGW9. At first, it's nice and bright, and over the long haul, it can keep up with the Seiko Diver, and in some ways even surpass it a little. The hands are just about the same as my Monster, but the dial and bezel are much brighter. This new Wavemaster isn't a king of Loom at all, like its oddball brother, but it's still great as divers go. Which is something you can also say about the bracelet as well. One of the coolest things about the original Wavemaster was its engineer style bracelet, which at the time was a brave departure from everyone else just doing this standard oyster style bracelet. So it's nice to see that they kept it as that was a big part of its identity. And especially since the fully articulating solid links of the design easily wrap around and conform to your wrist. That was part of what was great about it. And it's good to see that they also kept the solid end links and a good milled clasp in the design. So it's good, but not necessarily perfect. And one thing I complain about here is the extra long male end links, which do come down at a fairly aggressive angle, and that does help compensate for things a bit. But it still makes that effective lug to lug a little bit longer than it needs to. But even with all of that, the watch is very comfortable and balanced on that bracelet. Most of which I think is due to that engineer design. This is one I can easily wear all day on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, even more than the original now that's a little bit smaller. Oh, and I should probably point out here that it's a pretty tight fit with some aftermarket straps. There's not much clearance between the spring bar and the case. So some of the thicker straps you might run into out there won't quite fit into this one. That, and if you look at the engineer style bracelet with all these little moving angles, it can make it a little bit of a hair ripper. I didn't have too much of a problem with that, but if it's something you're susceptible to, then just be aware of that. As for value, that's one that's a little bit harder to talk about. You see, back in the day, the Wavemaster was easily one of the best bang for your bucks around. But the entire world has kind of changed a bit, including the watch industry. The Wavemaster GMT is listed at 385 US. But if you know anything about Phoebus, you'll know that there's always discount codes around, including one for this channel. And I think that brings it down just below 350. Now, at that price, if you're looking at just name brand watches, it's a pretty great deal. Right now you can find the original SSK GMTs for a little bit less than that. But the thing is, you're getting so much more here than you would with those Seikos. So this is easily a better buy, and that's how it's always been. Where things have changed, however, is with the whole AliExpress and Ollie brands. Back in the day, you couldn't find anything under 40 millimeters, and there are all these weird pseudo dress wash things. But these days, they've gotten their act together, and they have a number of NH34 GMTs out there. So the thing is, if you're just focused on price, there are going to be plenty of homage Paganis and steel dives that'll easily beat this one out for a GMT. But I think a better comparison is going to be with San Martin, just for the quality. And if I remember right, most of those San Martins are going to be pretty close to what Phoebus is charging for this one. So overall, there's still great value here. It's just not quite as amazing as it used to be. However, it's important to remember that this is one you could call a complete package. It's got everything you could want with an original design. 
Bottom line, great watch and one of the best entry level GMTs I've seen. Heck, it's one of the best dive style watches I've seen. I mean, if you can get a GMT at the same price as a diver, why not? Over the last few years, most of the watches I've seen from Phoebus have been kind of hit or miss. Phoebus has always maintained the same great build quality, but they've really been pushing some original designs, which some people like and others just flat out don't, making them a bit polarizing or maybe even divisive. However, the Wavemaster I think most would agree is a solid winner. And perhaps that is due to it being more of an evolution of the older Wavemaster than a completely new watch. As the Wavemaster was one of the watches that really created the first generation of Phoebus fans. And I think the GMT is set to create another. But what do you think about all this? As usual, let me know your thoughts down below. On the watch, on Phoebus, and if you can think of another GMT that does it better for less. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit some button. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, I'll see you next time.